Good evening, everyone, and welcome to okay. Thursday night um, mastermind call for the 26th of June. Tonight, Sandra's going to be talking about some stuff, and we're just going to be talking in general. So we'll hand it over to you, Sandra. Okay, cool. Um, g'day, everyone. Good evening. Um, now, tonight, I just want to talk briefly about like we're all on the same journey with the SFM and the DEA. We all we're all trying to build our businesses now. Whether we're trying to build our business inside the SFM or you know we're trying to build a business outside the SFM, we, we're utilising the SFM for the training and the education and the tools that they supply with us. Um, and, and whether you're new or whether you're experienced or partway through your journey, I think what we've all um, struck at times through our journey is we, we struggled to try and piece it together and figure out how it all fits into place and how it all works. And then we, we sit there and we also think, well, who's going to notice me because I'm, I'm not Stuart Ross, I'm not Jay Cubasack, I'm, you know, I'm not Tony Robbins. And that's, you know, that's a fair call. And so, you know, we follow our training and we start building our businesses and we, you know, we put up our Facebook fan pages and we set up our social media links on Twitter and Google Plus and LinkedIn and anything else we can get our hands on. And, uh, you know, and then the next phase is, you know, we have to utilise these social media platforms and everything else that we've signed up to and we start to get a little bit overwhelmed. And um, and and we wonder, you know, well, is anyone seeing or noticing the stuff that I'm putting out? Because you know, no one's commenting, no one's liking, no one seems to be sharing, and we start to get a little bit disillusioned and lost. Now, that's that's okay to feel that way, and it's it's a normal human emotion. But the, the problem comes when you start to feel a little bit lost and then you start not doing anything with your business. Um, now, apart from just using the tools in the SFM, and when I mean using the tools in the SFM, I don't mean just going to the webinars and just reading the books. I mean using the tools. I mean networking within the SFM community. You know, Utilise the tool of the SFM community. Get into the community. Get yourself on there. Ask questions. Connect with people, and mastermind with people. Talk to them. Um, you know, don't ask them how much they've made, but but talk to them about real concerns that you're having. Um, find links to their websites and their blogs. You know, find the members that you feel are doing really well, like Mark Ford or for instance, or somebody off the leaderboard like Marie Santos. Um, you know, or Chris, you know, Chris is uh, Chris McLean he's jumped up there second on, on the leaderboard. Find those guys' website and their social media um, presences and, and have a bit of a read and and just you know, not from thinking that you're gonna copy them and do exactly what they're doing, but you know, listen to their videos, have a sit back and take a little bit of a look at how they've set up their website and, and try and identify what tools within the SFM they're using. And you'll find that most of them will be using the, um, you know, the, the community, they'll be using the DBL with the website or a website. Um, they'll, you know, they'll have a strategic way that they place their banners, their advertising banners on their website. And you'll find that their social media platforms are also linked to their website and they do blogs. They may not blog every day, but they do do good quality blogs. Then the next step is how to get yourself out there and how to build your own presence online. Now, you know, talking about the tools we know, Facebook and Google, there's one thing I will say. I have noticed with a lot of members, especially new members and members still trying to find their way, they'll share a lot of stuff on Facebook. They become very absorbed on Facebook. And that's okay, but the thing you need to remember is if you have other social media sites, what are you doing with those? 
um, you know, if you share a picture and a good status on Facebook, why don't you copy that and put it onto your Google Plus page, your Twitter page, your LinkedIn page and any other social media platform that you have? Um, I, you know, I was emailed a, um, a chimp video uh, where these guys were sitting around with their guns in the jungle and this chimp come up and they were having a bit of a joke and one of the guys gave the chimp the gun and this chimp decided to shoot the gun off and these guys took off. I mean, Kathleen seen it, she got a laugh out of it. Now that was emailed to me first off and so then I you know, found it on Facebook and I shared it from um, Facebook onto my profile page and then I thought, well hang on a minute, I've got this, this video here. So I went to Google Plus and I shared the exact same thing on my Google Plus profile. Um, you know, and what that had done was because of the interaction that I was getting on Facebook and some of the people who were interacting with me on Facebook on that, that share also are on Google Plus and have connected with me on Google Plus, it brought my presence online up quite high on Google Plus as well. Um, with people interacting on it, on it there. And then there are other things you can do to build your brand. These are outside the SFM and there are places you can go to get, get some help. Okay? Now, Hootsuite is a program, it's a scheduling tool. It is free to utilise. If you're finding that posting to your social media site is just way too much for you because you've got a job and you've got kids to raise and you've got mortgages to pay and you've got a lot of other stuff to do and it's just too hard for you to you know, be constantly on these social media platforms and you shouldn't be on them all the time anyway. Use a scheduling tool like Hootsuite. There are many others like Buffer and, and quite a few. There's Post Planner and there's a lot of them out there. Find a scheduling tool. I use Hootsuite because it's free and I can post to five different um, social media sites at the same time. Put some scheduled posts in there um, and schedule them to post to your social media sites so you can be focusing on something else to do with your business like writing copy for an ad or setting up an ad. Um, and to build yourself some internet presence, there's things called Fiverr. Okay? Fiverr, we all know we can go to Fiverr and you can buy, you know, you can buy help for a banner. You can, you know, get a banner done for your Facebook page. You can get a banner done for your Google page, YouTube. You can get a banner done for your website. You can find people on there who sell their services, um, you know, and they charge you a little bit of money. Now, not everything is five dollars. Sometimes you'll pay thirty dollars for things. But you know, there there are people on there who'll write blog posts for you. There are people on there who will. Um, you know, run your figures for you. They'll they'll, they'll do your you know they'll do a spreadsheet, cash flow chart for your business. There's, there's all sorts of people on there doing tasks at quite reasonable prices. You'd be quite surprised. Now, a lot of people forget that something like Fiverr, you can also set yourself up a profile on there yourself. It costs you nothing. Um, and I am sure that you have a skill that you can utilise that people would be willing to pay for. And so I want you to think about who you are, the types of jobs you've done, you, you've done in the past, and the things that you know. You, you might have been an accountant. You may have been a manager. You, you, know, you may know how to use PowerPoint exceptionally well. You may know how to do you know, great videos in PowerPoint. Well, there's a skill. There's a skill straight up. Not everybody has PowerPoint. Not everybody's willing to pay for um, Microsoft Office on their computer. And even those who do have it, you know, wouldn't have the vaguest idea how to use PowerPoint and, and make a video with it. Yet you may have that skill. So why not set yourself up a profile on something like Fiverr? Um, charge a reasonable price. You know what you think is fair. You know, ten dollars or twenty dollars a video or whatever. Something. Something that's not so overpriced that nobody's going to use you and something that's not so cheap that no one's going to use you. Um, set yourself up a profile with a skill, just a simple skill like that and get yourself on Fiverr and then share your Fiverr profile on Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter and you know, share it at least you know, twice a week. 
on your own own profile pages. And you know, if there are friends or people that are willing to have you do that service for them for free um, and write a review for you on your Fiverr page, that's great as well. So if you've got a couple of friends that you could do that, that one tiny little thing for, um, or even a school group, you know, maybe that, or a community club that you're involved with, a sports club, you know, maybe you can go to them and talk to them and say, well, you know, I have this great skill um, that I, I normally charge for, and I was just wondering, I'm, you know, I'm trying to build a um, an online review for myself, and I was wondering, you know, could I do this video for you, and um, and would you be willing to go and you know give me a review and and build a little bit of free free review work up for yourself that way, so that that way when people come on the Fiverr and see your profile, you have a couple of people who have given you some reviews. And they don't need to know that these people haven't paid for your services. And and then they that you know, they know that you're a real person, they know that you can do what you can do. Um, you know, you may be really good at anything like that. You you've got skills, book work, uh, phone work, you know, you may be really, really good at phone work. Set yourself up a Fiverr profile and then start hitting some companies. Um, if you if you need some extra work, if you you know if you don't have a job, and you need money coming in straight away so you can continue your your journey with the SFM, and hit some companies with your Fiverr profile, and outsource yourself. Um, you know if if you have your your phone set at home, if you have your headset, and microphone set, and plugged into the phone and stuff, you just might be lucky enough to find yourself some work at home. I did it. Um, I, I didn't use Fiverr to do it, but I did something similar to that. I thought well. I know how to answer phones. In my younger years, I used to be a telemarketer, and I used to, um, you know, take calls for the company and make calls. Um, and I started hitting a few com uh, few companies and stuff. Well, I have picked myself up um, 20 hours a week working for the Suncorp Bank, and all I do is I, I take calls and I listen to the customers. Um, it's like a custom service call. I listen to their their complaints or their difficulties, and then I pass them through to the appropriate um, person that they need to speak to. And I just do that 20 hours a week, and I get paid for that. And, and it's not you know it's not not a bad little fee that I, that I get for that either, just quietly. Um, you know, so there are things like that that you can do if you think about it. You may think that you have no skills and that all of this stuff in the SFM is, is just like mind blowing and you have so much to learn, but you already have very valuable skills that you can use online to start generating some income and by doing this in your profile on Fiverr, you know, you put a little bit of information about yourself. You can link it to your website, which is linked to your SFM because you've got your banners and stuff on there. You're building an online presence, especially if people take the time to thank you for the service that you've provided, you know, um, and and leave with the comment there. You're building an online presence. That all goes into the the search engines and the ranking, and also your online presence. There's also another um, place that you can go to as well called helpouts.com. Google Helpouts, they are. And uh, they're a little bit strict, more stricter than, than Fiverr, but there's a lot of people on Google Helpouts that you can use to outsource different projects in your business to take some of the overwhelm off of you, and they'll do it for free. A lot of them do it for free. So you know there are some people there who will explain um, coding to you. So you can jump on their their webinar and and um, or their their training session, and, and they don't charge for it. Then there are other people who charge anything from you know a dollar ninety nine a minute, or you know um, a thirty five minute session for four, five bucks, and they'll actually teach you things. And you can anything from learning how to knit. Um, to learning how to cook, learning how to read menus, uh, you know, script writing, computers, business, technology, and the reason a lot of these people are on help out is they're building their online presence. 
you know, they're like us, they're internet marketers, they're starting out, they're trying to get noticed. So they've gone to the place called, you know, Help Out, Google Help Out. And they're building an online presence. And because Google Help Out is also linked to G+, and the big search engine Google itself, um, you know, and you can, with the permission of the other people on the Help Out, you can record those. You can then air them on your YouTube channel, which you know, is building an online presence for you. Um, now, I read a blog a couple months ago by a guy called Derek Halpern on his um, on his website, and it was about doing things online or doing things in your business um, for free, and should you do it? And it was his opinion that when you're starting out. Sometimes, yes, you should, as long as you can get a testimonial or a review or something from that person. So if you set yourself up on Help Out or Fiverr and you're doing something, you know, for people using, utilising one of your skills, whether it be, you know, voiceovers, you know, you might be doing voiceovers for, for videos. Um, yeah, there you go, there's Help Out there. See, rock guitar lessons. <laughs> singing lessons. It's quite amazing the categories that they have. Um, you know, and help out is a great way to build your brand. You know, because you're getting on there and what you're doing is you're helping other people. You're taking a skill that you have and you're helping other people. Now, you know, the thing with help out is you will have to register and it takes a little while for Google to process your registration because they like to know that you're a real person, um, and you, you know you're not you're not a scammy type person or anything like that. Um, so they do they do a little bit of a check and stuff. And for these people on here, I uh, like the healthy eating guidance, and she's charging what fifteen dollars for fifteen minutes. If you are charging on Health Out, there is um, Google does take a small percentage of in commission of of what you're charging. So just keep that in mind. But um, you know, these guys aren't on here so much for you know making you know millions of dollars. They're on here building their brand. You know, a, a lot of these guys have websites that are named similar to what their their help outs are, and their website pages are linked to help outs, and they get reviews from people on help outs, and then they also get the reviews onto their websites as well, which builds their presence. And they're making a couple of bucks at the same time. So if you can set yourself up in places like Help Out and Fiverr with a profile, and you know, perform a skill, just just anything that you're really good at, and that, like I said, that can be anything, anything at all, and either do it for free for people or charge people, what you're doing is you're building your brand, you're, you're building your online presence. And these are just little tools, just two of the main tools. There's a couple of more smaller ones. But these are two of the main tools online that you can utilize to build your brand, your presence, and your skills. Because, you know, you haven't made it this far in life as an adult without knowing anything at all. So you have skills, you already have skills and knowledges that, that you can share and, and do for other people whilst you're building on your SFM brand and plus you're building your brand as well. Because people talk on the internet, I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about the Help Out uh, crew, I mean, you know, there's a community, a Help Out community on G+, and there are other, other G+, um, you know, communities, you know, there's, there's Google Webmasters community, Google Analytics community, uh, Google Small Business community. And you will see through those that a lot of these guys do, do refer to help out. So, you know, these are just some of the tools. And what you're doing is you're, by, by setting a profile on help out, by setting a profile up on Fiverr, doing a couple of these little things, Make sure you link it to your website um, and your other social social medias, and you know, and integrate the tools and trainings you're learning in the SFM. 
you have a lot of mindset training that, that goes on in there. You, you're on a lot of webinars. There's a lot of recorded mindset webinars. Utilise those to keep your mindset healthy and strong. And then utilise a little talent that you have um, to help people on, on, online and, and, and build your presence make, and make a little bit of cash at the same time. You could get on Google Helpouts or even Fiverr and teach people how to loom band. Yeah, you know, I mean, I know it sounds like a childish thing and it's something that kids are into, but you would be surprised how many parents out there do not know how to loom band, and all their kids want them to do is to sit down and loom band with them. So you know, you could get on a you know Fiverr or Helpouts and 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 teach people how to how to loom band. Uh, you might think outside the box and think, well, okay, I can do a video and show people how to, how to knit. Uh, I can put that up on YouTube, you know, and direct traffic to it. Just simple little things like this, it's quite surprising how quickly it can build your brand. And, you know, if you also want to build your brand, find Hangout. Find SSN members who are having hangouts, or find other like-minded people who, well, there you go, no one's doing loom band, so there's a, um, you know, there's an opening right there for anyone who's a, who's a loom band trainer. <laughs> you, you, you'll get all, you, you'll be so busy, you, you know, you won't know what hits you. But find hangouts and get on hangouts. I mean, a, a few months ago, I was lucky enough to get into a hangout on part-time business builder with uh, Yuli and Scott Taylor McCormick. And at the time, it was just um, Scott and Yuli. And then Steve Greenhall came on board. And then Jill Humphreys joined in. And now Leslie and, um, and, and Jade are, are on there. And sometimes three gets on there. Sometimes we can have the panel full. Uh, and Yuli airs these Hangouts live um, and puts them on his part-time business builder YouTube channel. So I'm being exposed, you know, because I'm on this hangout and I'm partaking this hangout. I'm being exposed to all the connections that he's made to his business. So you know, people in his list and people who follow him are now seeing me on a hangout with uh, with these guys. And then I can also get the link to that hangout and I can put it on my Pinterest page. So I'm, you know, I'm now exposing, you know, the other guys who are on this hangout. Um, to my, you know, my followers and people who are following me. This is how you build interaction for yourself. And if you start doing these little things, you'll start to see things fall into place for you with your, your SFM business. It will start to make sense for you on, on the steps that you're going to need to take to build a list. Because you're actually actively doing things to build yourself up, your, your presence up online and, and get yourself out there and it will help you start to, to connect the dots with your SFM business. You know, each, you know, each day and each week that you're doing these things, it'll just click in the place for you and think, oh, okay, yep, now I understand what I've got to do there, you know, you know for people to be able to see what I'm writing on my website, I've got to get it out there. And then you'll come up, you know, then you'll start to come across things like Discuss and Live Fire. These are comment plugins. You know, these are plugins that people use on their website um, for comments. They don't like the WordPress comments, so they shut that down and they use things like Live Fire. Well, I use Live Fire on one of my websites. And the good thing about that is I, I can connect it to Facebook. So every time I post something like a blog off my, my, my website onto Facebook and somebody comments on Facebook on, on that post, it takes that comment and installs it on my blog post under that, that blog post. So yeah, there's a way of, of repetition without me having to actually do too much about it. Building, you know, building my brand, getting myself out there. Um, you can also just type, you know, you can just go to Google and you can find out what Google Hangouts are airing live and you can view a couple of people's Hangouts live. Some of them will actually just put you straight up on the panel without even knowing who you are, you know. Um, and you can start watching these live Hangouts. You can leave comments, questions, um, 
cause some interaction. Of course, you'll look for hangouts that are sort of along your mindset and your thinking, but what you're doing here is you're alerting these people who are on this hangout to, to the fact that you're here and you're taking notice of what they're doing and this is who you are. So, you know, they're going to start to keep an eye on you and, if, you know, if you visit one or two of their hangouts and you're interactive, you're, you're starting to build your brand. These, these are things that, that you've got to be aware of and they're very easy to do and but you've got to stop beating yourself up and saying that you don't know how to do anything. You know a lot more and you have skills that people are willing to pay for. Over in the United States, there's a website called um, TaskRabbit and you would be amazed at the, the people on that website who get paid for doing things and the stuff that they get paid for. There are, you know, there are older people that we would call old age pensioners over here, right? Um, there are people in America who are a part of TaskRabbit and people will call them and that their, their skill might be putting together flat pack furniture. So instead of putting the flat pack furniture together, you know, a mum at home with two kids, she'll ring one of these guys, to come, you know, one of these people to come into the house and put together her flat pack for her so she can continue running around in the yard with the kids and the, and the dogs or she can run the kids to daycare and school and stuff like that. So, you know, people will pay for services of, of any kind, skills of any kind. A skill you think that everyone has, they probably don't have it. So, you know, I want you to start taking a fresh look at, at you, who you are. Give yourself some value. You're a valuable member of your society, you're a valuable member of your community, you're a val valuable member of your, your family and you have valuable skills that can help other people. So, <laughs> Sandra's doing a health out about health outs right now. <laughs> I like that, Chris. So, you know, Take some pride in yourself. You, you are valuable, and and start pulling yourself apart. You know, like Guy and Alan talk about. You know, um, reverse engineering things. I want you guys to now get a notepad and a pen, and I want you to reverse engineer yourself and have a look at all the different things you've learnt through life, all the different things that you can do. Some things you know you'll be better at than others. And, and have a look at things like Fiverr and Help Out and, and different things like that. And if you can get yourself a profile on there and, you know, and, and start you know, providing that one skill to people, that one thing to people to help them um, and make a little bit of money on it on, on the side whilst you're building your SSM business, it's, it's not going to seem that daunting for you and it's not going to seem that hard. And I mean... For all of us, like Robbie and me and Marie and some longer term in the two types of SFM members, you know, we have developed skills within the SFM that we can actually make money on Fiverr and help out in, in other places for and even build our brand even more. You know, with, with the DBL, you know, I could build websites for small businesses, which I do. You know, I utilise the DBL, build them a website, um, you know, get their, get their .com and everything, um, you know, take their pictures, I personalise it a little bit, um, work with them, they like it, if they like it, well then I can sell them the package in the DBL, you know, either the $25 package or the $47 package, um, you know, and they, they pay me, you know, I only, I only charge 300 bucks for building the website unless it's a big build. If it's a big build, it'll cost more. But, you know, for a small website, I just charge 300 bucks for the build. And then, you know, I, you know, enroll them into the hosting package of the DBL. So then I'm getting a monthly income off of that. You know, there's another way. You know, you have these skills. You, you can do this. Um, but as a new member, um, the DBL and what I'm talking about there, that's probably going over your head. But I want you to stop beating yourself up and saying, you know, I, 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 you know, I know nothing. You know a lot. You, you're probably working. You probably have a job. You could be a mum at home. You could have been a teacher in the past, you know. You could have been a primary school teacher who's taken time off, gotten married 
and, and had children, you know, you may have, have been a math teacher for primary school level children. Well, you can use Fiverr and help out and become a tutor and sell your tutoring skills on there. That's building your brand. That's building who you are. And that's, you know, that, that's providing value. That's providing value to the community. It's providing value to, to people who, who need that help. I mean, you know, if you can set yourself up a profile and help out for Fiverr as a, you know, a, an English teacher um, for, for, for children aged, you know, uh, 6 to, to 10, say, um, you know, and your rates are a lot better than, you know, these tutoring companies that most people end up getting stuck with and overpaying for, you know, you're not only helping out some kids and some parents, you're helping yourself out as well because you're actively working on your the things that you're good at. So you're constantly reaffirming that you are valuable and you know you have things that people can pay for. And that's how you'll tie all of this in together. So you know don't don't get overwhelmed, don't get stressed, don't get frustrated and think oh you know. SFM, website, Google Plus page, Facebook page, Twitter page, you know, oh, now you want me to do a Fiverr profile. Don't forget you can also use Fiverr and, and help out and there's quite a few other places you can go online as well. You can outsource to those and as you've seen on help out, there's a lot of things in there that are free. Uh, you know, so, and, and those people that are doing those things for free, you know, they're, they're doing it to build their online presence, to build them up as an authority in their field. And then, you know, so that's how you tie it all together. Use, use things like scheduling tools, like Hootsuite, Post Planner, Buffer, you know, they're all out there. Use them. I mean, it will only take you, you know, 15, 20 minutes top to jump onto something like Hootsuite and whack up a heap of posts that you want to go out to your social media site for the next, next week. That way, in that week, you can still go to work, focus on, if, you know, if you're focused on doing videos, you can focus more on your doing your videos and getting your videos out there. Or if you're building your website, you know, because you've taken care of your social media through a scheduling tool like Hootsuite, Post Planner or Buffer, you can now put more of your focus on your website and then you're not taking so much of your time away from your family and then beating yourself up because you're not spending the time with your family and your kids that you should be spending. So I want you to start to think more outside the box. Um, get involved in the SFM community. If you can get yourself onto a hangout, get yourself onto the odd hangout. It doesn't have to be a weekly thing, but you know, you'll enjoy it. You don't have to say anything. Uh, you don't even have to have have yourself on camera if you don't want. A lot of these hangouts are at you know five o'clock in the morning for me. So a lot of the times I don't even have my my webcam on. I just have a picture of myself. Then other times, well, I think, well, I don't mind. It's five o'clock in the morning. They're going to be. I'm going to be talking about what time it is for me. So yeah, this is what I look like at five o'clock in the morning after I've had four hours of sleep and gotten out of bed. Um, you know, it shows me as a real person. Uh, and I, and I do. You know, when I do get on these hangouts. Um, sometimes I don't say much at all, but there is there is the follow through from that. Um, you know, I've built a really tidy following on G Plus, my personal profile. Um, you know, and on you know on Twitter. You know, I'm always getting new requests on Twitter and followers on Twitter, LinkedIn, and it's all because of what I'm doing with you know things like what I'm talking about now tonight. You know, just jumping on a hangout for an hour. Some of the hangouts I don't even hang around for an hour. I can't. I haven't got the time. You know, some of them I'll jump on and I'll be on there for as long as I can and, and then I'll, I'll move on and, and do what I have to do. And, and that's how you build yourself up. Now the SFM, you know, it's, it's an info business. You haven't got an actual product to sell. And you're thinking, you know, oh, I couldn't mentor anyone because I don't have the skills. Well, if you think like that, you're not going to do anything with your business. Even if you're only a week old, if you're thinking like that, you're going to do nothing with your business. You have more skills to mentor than what you really know that you have. And you know, 
because you're a part of a great business community like the SFM and the DA and we have the community there, you know, we have, there is a community and you know, there's a group on Facebook, there are mastermind groups everywhere, there are other people. You could, be, you could have been in, in the SFM for a week and, had, you know, and been doing some paid advertising, solo ads or whatever and you know, had people coming in on your list and had some people sign up under you. You know, that's fine and don't be afraid that you can't mentor them, you, you can. You just leverage the community to mentor them and you know, to talk to people. You, you know where to direct them and be honest with people. Um, you know, so, but yeah, you got skills. Um, and I'm sure there's some other people out there who have come across uh, tools and, and little tricks and, and knickknacks. So, um, Bobby, what have you come across that would be, um, would be helpful for, for our members? Well, actually for anyone trying to start an online business. Not sure, you have put me on the spot here. I've been busy doing things. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> is everyone unmuted? Is there anyone out there come across any little helpful things like Google Helpouts, Fiverr, things like that that you can use to, um, to help yourself? I think a lot of people have got themselves muted. But you're quite welcome to talk if you want. Quite welcome to talk if you want. Chris is talking. Chris is talking. He's not showing up. <laughs> I, I am muted. Oh, good. Oh, good. Um, I don't really have anything to add in terms of resources. I think you've, you've covered them off pretty well. There's a lot that I like. I, I didn't know about um, help outs. I'd heard about five from the SFM guys, but yeah, help outs I hadn't heard. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like really yeah. good resources and yeah, just up to it's a bit of bit of extra income for for skills that you don't think that you have. Um, but you know, just, just on that, actually, I, I uh, my 90 day video challenge a couple of days ago was about something really similar. It's basically mm -hmm. the I've just been I've just been commenting on on people's posts and saying hey well done and kind of which just turned into um, sort of inspiring people and um, then one uh, one guy I was just chatting to about and said oh, you know Facebook ads is rubbish I don't want to spend money on it and I bought Vinyl Lines product and blah 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 and I just I typed back and said hey look, it doesn't have to cost a fortune doesn't have to be risky just put five bucks on an ad see if it runs, if it works, put another five bucks on it if it doesn't. You know, so you know, spend a hundred bucks in a week and you've done a whole lot of testing or a hundred bucks a month, you've done a whole lot of testing. And you know, that's knowledge that I got uh, a month ago. <laughs> you know, I've been doing Facebook ads for two months and suddenly I'm an expert to someone that's never done it before. Well, that's exactly right. That's exactly you know, this right. is my point. You know, um, mm. you've been doing it for two months, 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 and you could you could you could write copy for people. And you you could have a private yeah. profile and write Facebook ad copy for people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it yeah. doesn't take much to, to know something to be an expert. Yeah. An expert's only that's someone that knows more than you. That's right. That's right. Exactly right, and that and right. help out, you know, you can help, help out because you have a profile on help out. Um, even if you did it for free, you can coach people on how how to do Facebook ads or how to you know how to set it up. So it's not costing them a fortune. You know, what a great coach for people who don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So as you're saying, like, is we all do stuff that we we discount. <laughs> Before done, you know, like say if it's knitting or if it's walking or buying running shoes or whatever it is we do stuff that we discount. There's always somebody looking to know that information. There is. There's always there is. somebody There's looking always to know that information. And it's funny you should mention these running shoes as well because 
I noticed on Facebook, on Facebook, 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 Facebook,
the whole, you know, how much am I paying if that's in, in American dollars or, you know, what's the difference between the pound and the Australian dollar and I can't do that whole sort of translation sort of thing. That does my head in. Um, you know, so, you, you know, you can also do a little bit of local local affiliate marketing with um, an Australian company like Commission Factory and get a couple of um, Australian links as well and, and build, build a little bit of money like that, you know, and I mean, I'm pretty sure Commission Factory now have David Jones and Harvey Norman, so it wouldn't be that hard to find an affiliate link for something like the RoboMate. Yep, makes sense. Yeah. The Chris yeah, um, yeah, your video, yeah. Abby, is that Abby trying to talk? Yeah, I just uh, was in the out of the box everything. You have to think out of the box and uh, do the things like Yeah, yeah, think out of the box and yeah, stop trying to, um, like don't let your mind get too laser focused on the SFM as if it's a separate identity from everything else because really what they're teaching in the SFM and everything that you're doing in the SFM is exactly the same as what you would do um, with any other business, even a, even, even a brick and mortar business. There's a lot of things you do on the, in the, inside the SFM that you're learning to do that you do it on a daily basis with a brick and mortar business anyway. Um, you know, Computers, well, you know, in in a brick and mortar business these days, I, I don't think I've been into any brick and mortar business that doesn't have a computer, even on a construction site where they're building a house. You know, you'll you'll find computers or laptops or uh, iPads or you know, you'll find something there that's on the internet that they'll be using, whether it be you know um, to order some stuff, you know, to the site because you know the order was too short or you know there was something extra that they needed or you know, um, talking to the architect about the, the plans and going over it from site. You know, um, Skyping, you know, um, the, the client, you know. The internet is a pretty prevalent thing and I just felt that it was time that um, we, we spoke in a mastermind group and, and it just opened up the fact that you know, the SFM isn't separate, it's not something different. Um, it is a great business opportunity that you can build and you know a lot of the info products in the SFM are going to make you a lot of money down the track but I, I ask people to look at it from a realistic point of view okay um, you know we have our high ticket commission products of the SFM and that's really great for us um, but we've got to be able to drive traffic to us and we've got to have a following. We've, we've got to build our brand. We've got to build. A, we've got to be able to be noticed before anyone's even going to see those high-ticket products that we're selling. Okay, and then think of it. You know, from from this perspective, you have a Ferrari dealership. Then right next, uh, you know, well, say one shop down, you have second-hand car dealership. Now, if you sat on the other side of the road and watched those two dealerships for the whole day and monitored the traffic. The second hand car dealership is going to have more foot traffic and, and just more traffic in general coming into their car lot than the Ferrari is going to. Because the Ferrari is a high end specialised motor vehicle that, you know, only people who are serious about buying that product are going to walk into a Ferrari sales room and purchase the Ferrari. People who aren't even Thinking about purchasing a car will often stop and wander through a second-hand car yard. They may not purchase. The second-hand car yard will get a lot more traffic than the Ferrari car yard because the people who are buying the Ferrari are 100% sure that that's what they want. And that's the same with our products in the SFM, especially our, our high-ticket products. The people who are going to buy those products from you are people who are 100% sure that's what they want. You know, they're, they're not going to be fluffy about it, they're going to know that that's what they want and they want it from you. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it is a business and, and, and run it just like any other business and, and link it to yourself um, and, and 
what you're doing, you know, and, and building your brand online and uh, and get involved. You know, set yourself set set yourselves up a profile and discuss. It's a comment thread. I mean, Guy and Alan have it on their website. Stuart Ross, he has discuss on his website. Go to his uh, Stuart Ross's website. Um, read one of his blogs. Go down to the bottom to leave a comment, and if you don't have a Discuss profile already, it'll ask you if you want to set up a Discuss profile. Click there and set up a Discuss profile. Your profile can be your Facebook profile, it can be your business, your Facebook fan page profile, it can be your G Plus profile, your Twitter profile, it can be your, your business page or your, your Twitter business page. It can be you know, either one of those profiles. If you don't want to set up your own personal profile, set it up from your business perspective. I've done it in Discuss. I've got my one. I've got myself set up in there as One Stop Allo Shop. I also have my. I've got two profiles. I've also got my Sandra Lemming uh, profile as well. And depending on where I'm commenting along the internet on other people's blogs will depend on which profile I use. So on some of the blogs that I go to and I comment on, in Discuss, I'll comment as One Stop Allo Shop. And people will see my, my business logo. They'll see One Stop Allo Shop when they scroll over it. That they, they can click on that and it will take them to my website. It's directly linked to onestopalloshop.com. So people who are seeing my, my comment thread um, in the Discuss comment under, say, you know, and I'm using my One Stop Allo Shop profile, they can then click on, on that One Stop Allo Shop profile and it will take them straight to my One Stop Allo Shop website. So I'm driving free traffic from somebody else's blog who gets, you know, who, who may get a hundred thousand, who's got a hundred thousand subscribers and gets lots of comments. I'm directing them from that blog. They're seeing my comments. That, you know, I'm directing them from that blog to to my website. It's free organic traffic, and you're building yourself a brand. What what can happen then is people can follow you on Discuss. I've got people following me on my personal profile. I've got a lot more people following my One Stop Allo Shop profile and stuff. And it's the same with Live Fire. You can set yourself up. Um, you know, some blogs will have this, this comment section called Live Fire. Um, I have it on One Stop Allo Shop. You can set yourself up a profile on that. Um, and people can follow you in Live Fire. Um, and then everywhere you go on the internet, because you've set yourself up a profile in LiFire, and I've got profiles set up in LiFire, Discuss, and anything else, I can set myself up a profile. And when I go and comment with those particular profiles, um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving breadcrumbs throughout the internet, which is building my presence. It's building my brand. And it really does not take long to leave a comment. Um, you know, you can be on Stuart Ross's website, set up your Discuss profile. It will take you all of a couple of seconds to leave a one-line comment. Sandra? Because you, yep. Sandra, you're using hashtag, uh, hashtag on all of those comments? Uh, some comments I'll use hashtags in there. If I'm using my Google Plus profile, I definitely always use hashtags in my comments. So what happens is hashtag and a Google uh, search will be here. Well, because I have um, a Google Plus profile set up in Discuss, Live Fire and a couple of others, um, when I'm using my Google Plus, when I'm commenting with my Google Plus profile, um, sometimes if I can get a hashtag into the comment that I'm leaving under the blog, um, what that hashtag does is that builds that presence of that comment and that blog into the hashtag section of Google+. Okay. Hashtags are important too. You know, e even on, you know, you should, all, you should try and remember to use hashtags. See, Robbie's got my profile up here. Yeah, this is the video I was talking about, but if you notice, I've put the hashtag there, Wacky Wednesday, funny video, um, and you know, hilariously funny. Now, you know, that video has shown to all my followers and subscribers, and plus it's also on the pages of Wacky Wednesday, funny video, because these are separate pages in Google Plus. Um, and you know, some of these people who have clicked like on this and commented on this, you know, 
that I'm not even following them and they're not following me. So, you know, that's, that's how you use hashtags to build. You're building a bigger view for your stuff that you're posting. So, so you, you know, you're getting yourself onto another page <clears throat> besides just your own page. And when you share, if you see up there it says shared publicly, make sure you always share with, um, share it publicly and share it with your circles, share it publicly, share it with your circles, your extended circles, um, you know, on Google Plus, so, so make sure you share it properly. A lot of people aren't sharing properly, they're leaving public off, um, they're only picking um, a couple of names and something that they wanted to share publicly is now not being seen publicly, it's only being shared privately because they're only sharing it, you know, they're not sharing the, the right way. Um, I'm, I just helped a lady just the other day actually and she privately messaged me um, on Google through Google Chat. And she asked me how I get my stuff into so many places on Google Plus. And I told her, I said, well, it's because I use hashtags and it's the way I share. And she's like, but I share every day. I share, you know, six, seven things a day. And anyway, you know, she gave me the, you know, I went to her page and I followed her page. Um, and she gave me a look at her page. Well, everything she'd shared on her page was shared privately. So no one in the Google Plus community except that, that small circle that she was sharing with was seeing her post. So she was getting no interaction. So I showed her how to open up her shares and get them on the home page and get them in front of all the people and put hashtags on them. And, and now she's much happier. I got a message to her from her just before I come on here. Um, and said, you know, and she said to me, you know, oh, this is great. Now my friends can see all my posts, <laughs> and and that's all she was really concerned about—the fact that she wanted to interact with her friends, but none of her friends could see anything because she didn't know how to share properly on Google Plus. Uh, Facebook, I try and make sure I include at least two to three hashtags on things that I post on Facebook as well. Because hashtags are another, you know, they're separate pages on Facebook as well. If you, um, you know, there's Throwback Thursday, that's a page on its own on, on Facebook. So if you've got a, a post from, you know, days gone by, you can you can hashtag it, you know, Throwback Thursday, and it'll it'll share on your profile to all your friends and stuff. It'll also share on the Throwback Thursday page, to and people will see it who aren't even connected to your Facebook page. Then they're, they're not even friends of yours. And that's how I build um, interaction on Facebook, Al along with commenting on blogs. I always take the time uh, a couple times a week to visit blogs and uh, comment on them. And I, I always look for blogs that have Discuss, Livefire, or any other comment platform that I can build a profile on. And once I've got a profile in there, you know, people can follow my profile and I can follow their profile and I can see what other blogs they're commenting on and they can see what other blogs I'm commenting on. I can go and visit their website. They can go and visit my website. They can, if I'm, you know, commenting with my Google Plus profile, they can find me on Google Plus and follow me. Um, you know, so if you have a business page on Google Plus and you set up a, a Google Plus profile and discuss, set it up with your business page if you want to grow a following on your business page. So then every time you comment on a, on, on a blog, through Discuss, make sure you use your Google Plus business profile, comment as your, your business page, and that way when people scroll over that, they can follow you on Google Plus. You, you can pick up some extra followers just from making a couple of comments on some other people's blogs. That's fantastic advice, Sandra. Oh, it's Marie. Marie how are you doing? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've had to sort of, um, I've been ducking in and out because, as you guys know, it's bedtime for the kids and I finally got the eldest down to sleep. Well, she's not sleeping yet. She might actually yell out for me any minute, but um, yep. she's finally in bed. Um, but yeah, amazing advice on what I've heard. I've been muted the whole time, but I have been listening. Oh, that's that's all right. We've we've got it recorded anyway, Marie. Because you know a lot lot of guys have got the kids. And some, you know, she's got 
um, the sick kids and Eileen's health isn't really that well at the moment. So, you know, we, we've got it recorded for everyone. Um, yeah. Awesome. awesome. But I'm just trying to share with people how I've managed to build, you know, my brand um, up so quickly. Mm. Amazing advice. You, you know what, um, if there's something that I can add with regards to the branding, um, for, for, for those of you who don't know me all that well, Sandra, you know that I'm, I'm a self-proclaimed tech dummy. You know, all the stuff that you actually shared just now, I, I had, didn't even know, you know what I mean? But if there's anything that I can add, it's that despite me being a tech dummy, what I've really um, focused on when, when I was in the journey of building my brand is that in everything that I did to do with my brand, I focused on everything being customer or client-centric, that makes any sense. Yep. Um, I, I know nothing about hashtags, I know nothing about, you know, I didn't use Hootsuite for, for quite some time and all that stuff, and they're great strategies, um, but for someone who's a tech dummy like me, if you focus, put all your focus in everything that you do um, in ensuring that your branding is truly for the service of your clients, and you've got to know who exactly that is, then that's a really good way of building your brand because if, if, it, if your branding really hits the people that you want to hit right between the eyes, then they'll share. You know, you, hit, you kind of um, attract one person who you want to attract into your business or to your fan page or whatever. If, if it really is something that they value and if it's something that they think is um, valuable to their friends or people who are just like them, then they'll share with you, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that's, that's true, um, Marie, that they, they do. If you stay customer, um, customer focused on what value you can add to your customer, you know, what, what's good for the customer, they will, they will share. And that's why, you know, it's good to set yourself up a, you know, profile. Do, do service, you know, think of yourself as, as a service provider and you know, um, when you're starting out and you, if you do have a good skill like, you know, how to use PowerPoint or how to do spreadsheets, um, you know, how to edit pictures in PowerPoint, um, how to, you know, make videos in PowerPoint, set yourself up a profile on Fiverr and help out and, you know, and start providing a service to people. Whether That's you do it for right. free or whether you charge, you know, ten bucks for it, it doesn't matter. You're providing a service to people, you're helping people, and all, and you will get reviews back. And those testimonials and reviews, you can then put those on your website because you know they're yours and and they belong to you. And yeah. and why not display them on your website? You know, it lets people and it's not, visit you. Exactly, and it's not even. It doesn't have to have anything to do with SFM. It could be anything because. At the end of the day, all somebody needs to say about you um, is that you're real and that you're legitimate, you're authentic, that you're a nice person. Even just those things, someone says something like that about you means a lot because if someone thinks that you're not just even just a nice person or someone who's authentic, when they go to your page, they won't have as any hesitation to listen to what you've got to say. You know what I mean? It really could be anything and, and that really means heaps. Because when someone looks at your Facebook page, like I don't, I seriously, for my pa Facebook page, I don't promote SFM at all. Not at all. I never put up a post that will say, oh, come and join my opportunity or check out SFM. I, I post things in there that are just inspiring to the people that I'm trying to reach. And they come looking through my page and they'll come and find SFM. They'll, they'll discover it for themselves. Um, and it, it's not, it, whatever it is that you put out there through your Fiverr profiles or, you know, um, anything that you share out there doesn't have to have, it doesn't have to be you promoting yourself as some online expert. It, it's just to show that you really are an authentic person, that you're human, and that you're out to provide a service. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. And you build a, um, build a brand that way. It might take a little while for, for people like me who don't, you know, um, use a lot of those strategies that you mentioned, which are awesome. I learned a lot from you tonight. <laughs> um, but 
it, it's it, it works. Just focus that. Focus on the fact that every touch point that you provide to the people that you want to attract as prospects, if you focus on the fact that each and every touch point must be client centric or customer centric, then they will be attracted to you and they'll tell their friends. And that's, that's all you want. I mean, I do the same. I'm the same as you, Marie. I mean, uh, on my, um, my personal profile on Facebook, I I share, I mean, for starters, my personal profile on Facebook is public. It's a public profile. Most, you know, people can see it even without being my friend. I have certain things that are private on there that, you, that no one can see. But um, across the top of my personal profile page, I have an aloe vera picture. And, um, and when people scroll over my name on Facebook, when I go and comment on posts and, and fan pages and stuff, they scroll over my name. My banner pops up, and then um, you know, CEO and founder of One Stop Ello Shop pops up. So just by visiting my page, they can then find my One Stop Ello Shop page, and that's how I was so you know, that's how I was able to so quickly build likes and um, you know, and fans on on my fan page without having to spend a lot of money on advertising. Um, you know what? And, what you've done is you've upped your no like and trust factor by doing that. Um, and that exact yeah, that's that's exactly the right thing you want to do. You've just got to up that no like and trust factor. Remember that people must know like and trust you before they want they want to have anything to do with you. Um, and by showing that you're an authentic person, they'll discover what you're doing. They'll want to know what you're doing. Well, and it's human curiosity. In. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what? I wanted to share something tonight because I'm. I'm going to have to go soon, but we were talking about resources, right? Mm -hmm. And as I was walking around the house, I, I came up with this idea, it's probably something that's been discussed in the past, but you know, we all have our talents, We all, every single one of us in the community, we all, we all are good at something. And I thought, what if we had some sort of directory or list of something that we could contribute towards the community? Um, so say for example, and this is not true at all, but this is just an example, say I said on there that I'm an excellent copywriter or I'm a, I'm a really good um, graphic designer or I like um, you know, doing photo edits or I like building websites or whatever it is. If we could maybe have a list of skills that we could contribute towards the community or I like proofreading for example, maybe we can you know, save, you know, help each other out in that sense and save each other some money rather than having to go out and outsource a whole bunch of things, if we could maybe donate a specific skill into a list and if any one of us needs help with anything, then we'll know who's good at what. Well, yeah, that's, that's a good point and we could actually probably put up a, because um, uh, Robbie has optimised press on, on our downundermarketing.com uh, website, so we could probably actually put this directory up the directory page up on the downundermarketing.com um, yeah. for all the members. Um, you know, yeah. so. That's a, I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be compulsory. We don't have to do it. But for those who are prepared to, you know, um, share something that they're good at with the rest of the community to help someone out, it's a good opportunity to help and be helped. Well, it's a good opportunity to keep yourself active in what you're doing as well, and. You know, by doing these simple things, that that's you know that's why I suggest people you know set yourselves up a profile on Fiverr and, and get on to help out um, and start helping uh, people find find something that you're good at that, that you can utilise and, and help people. It solidifies in you your confidence and your self-esteem because without you know without that you can have your self-esteem and confidence pulled down drastically and. You know, when, when a human being has their self-confidence and their self-esteem you know, stripped from them, um, you know, it, it can leave them very lethargic as far as you know, committing to, to their future and actually taking a hold of an opportunity like the SFM and really running with it and, and giving it some punch and, and, and becoming successful in their own right. Oh, that, that, that's an awesome point. You know, I can't even tell you how, how much I agree with that, Sandra. I think that for a lot of people, for a lot of people that I've spoken to anyway in the community, um, you know, a lot of the members, for example, that I, I, I bring in, a lot of them feel like they're not 
good enough to be promoting SFM. And that's fine in the beginning, it right? It's such a massive difference. Pardon? Yeah. I said, well, you know, that, that's fine in the beginning as a new member if you don't feel like you, you, you know, if you don't feel like you're good enough to promote the SFM. Um, that's, that's, that, that's human nature and, um, and we understand that and, and that's why I'm encouraging people to think about the skills that they are really actually good at. And, yeah, and I'm, saying, that and I'm saying that the confidence it. level though is so important. You mm. were talking about, I heard you talk about the two motor dealers, right? You know, the Ferrari motor dealer and, you know, the yep. second hand car dealer. And um, I was listening to that and, and that really um, got me thinking about this whole confidence issue because if, if you're going to try to be a Ferrari dealer but you don't feel like you belong at Ferrari, People who walk into that dealer will know that you don't, mm -hmm. you don't know what you're talking about, that you don't actually feel like you belong there. But it's so important to be confident in what you're promoting before you can promote that. Does that make sense? So if, in anything that you do, if there's anything that you can do to continue to build up your confidence, including yeah, practicing your skills, um, in order to get some kind of positive feedback or some review of some sort, anything that you can do to build up your confidence is going to make a huge difference to your success because you need to be confident enough. Otherwise, you won't attract people um, who are going to be prepared to, to work with you or to deal with you. That's right, yep. Yep, and I think confidence. You've really got to have that confidence. And it is human nature when you're new. It is. I understand that. But yeah. that's probably one of the things that people need to work on. If they haven't got that confidence, that's probably one of the first things that they need to work on. They need to believe in themselves enough, um, you know, to, to, to feel like they belong in the SFM community and that they are good enough to promote it. Well, you know, the minute, you know, the minute that they've, taken those, you know, the, the, the video series and then they've taken that next step and paid for their membership, the minute that you have done that, you do belong in the SFM community. Um, you know, and I, and I know it's hard for a lot of people because they think, you know, they do lack a little bit of confidence and they don't, they don't think they have the skills. But, you know, if you had, you know, if you had the now, you know, if you had enough confidence to say, okay, I'm going to pay for this and go with it, well, you know, you're already 99% ahead of so many more people, so many other people who, who haven't even looked yet. Um, but, but for some reason, you know, during their journey, they, they lose their confidence and self-esteem. So I think your directory idea is a great idea, Marie, because we all do have separate skills that we're all really good at. And by, you know, with us all doing this and setting up the directory um, page, you know, that way, you know, we're actually physically writing down what we're good at and what we can help out, you know, help out with. That's, that's going to instill some self-confidence and, and, and self-esteem into, into us as well. Because, I mean, you know, look at the SFM community. You've got everyone from teachers, school teachers to, you know, taxi drivers like me and um, people like Robbie who have done a million and one things. Um, right back to defence, Nick, you know, he's in the defence force, he's a helicopter pilot, you know, um, there's Kathleen, well, you know, she's taking care of uh, Brenna and she has a lot of experience with, you know, um, the struggles of being a parent who has, you know, just a 24-7 job um, at home and, you know, then, then you've got accountants, police officers, you know, doctors, lawyers, you've got people from all walks of life, secretaries, um, you know, construction workers, you know, we have them all here in the community and if we do it, the list and the directory, it'll give us all the ability to actually say, well, oh, okay, hang on a minute, I actually am good at something that can help yeah. someone. Uh, that's right. And you know what? Another thing that I just um, thought about now is the fact that we've obviously all been attracted to SFM for a reason and we are bound to be somebody else's target audience. 
So if you see someone in the community that happens to be your target audience, don't hesitate to go and approach them and ask them for some views to help with your marketing. Um, like as an example, if, um, if somebody out there in the community wanted to target someone like me, for example, like a stay-at-home mom, um, you know, we could be open to being contacted by that person, to be asked a few questions about our life, and getting to know the kind of people that you want to attract. Feedback. You know, like if yeah. I wanted to, you know, say if I wanted to target, um, say if I had a, I, I had a product in one stuff I shop that I thought would be beneficial to stay-at-home mums like yourself with kids. You know, if I was doing up an ad, I could easily write the ad get the ad prepared and I could, you know, send you a message and go, hey Marie, you know, could you have a look at this from a, from a customer's point of view? I'm targeting, yes. you know, stay-at-home mums yep. like you with kids. And that way you can give me direct, you know, market research feedback that's valuable to me um, that could help me before I actually have to even pay the test yet. Yeah, I'm looking forward to everyone contributing in that way. Well, I think it's a good way that we can help each other out. Um, instead of sitting there pulling our hair out and going, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? Have I written it right? Haven't I written it right? <laughs> <laughs> something we can do with our number group to um, take this group to another level. It is. Yeah, Robbie, it is. It is something we can do. We don't have to do it. You know, I have something in, else. In wise. I'm walking around. You have something else, Marie? Yeah, and I've forgotten what it is. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, oh my goodness, what was it? I had another idea that I wanted to share with everybody and run by you guys. Um talked about the directory. Hang on, I'm going to cough one second. I've got a terrible cough. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Does anyone else have any suggestions as to how we can make our community more helpful for everybody? <laughs> These Thursday nights are awesome, um, and I think this is invaluable personally. But if there's anything else that anyone else can think about, or oh, if anyone has a question that you want to ask Marie or Robbie or or me or far away. I'm trying to think of my idea. Oh my God, does it? Does this happen to you? <laughs> I'm like 34, 30, 70. It generally happens to me when I'm writing a blog. <laughs> Avon uh, has a question. <clears throat> yep. Hi. I'm Avon's written a question in the box. Making you learn about hashtags. Sam, so that wasn't for you. I've got no idea. <laughs> okay, where can we learn about hashtags? Talk to Someone Sandra. Someone who knows nothing. Yep, yep. Um, what I will, uh, what I will do is I will, um, I will do up a very easy to follow basic blog on our downundermarketing.com website along with a, a short video and then I'll share it in the community for everyone and I'll share it on our um, Facebook fan page. Um, awesome. Because generally when you go searching for how to use hashtags on the website, on the internet, a lot of the stuff you will come across is double dutch. They'll be talking double dutch and you'll be scratching your head thinking, what the heck are they talking about? It took me about four and a half months to decipher the double dutch when it came to explaining how to use hashtags. 
Well, my head's already spinning with all the trading, so that would be awesome. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do a blog about hashtags and how to use hashtags in your marketing um, on your Facebook pages and, and Twitter and stuff like that. And it would just be very basic, very, very basic with a little tutorial video. Basic is perfect. <laughs> Well done, Chris. <laughs> so have we jogged your memory yet, Marie? No. <laughs> I'm thinking hard. Um, it was to do with resources. Like something that would really be... Oh, yes, here it is. I've got it. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the importance of um, and the impact of social credibility. That, for me personally, has made a massive difference. And I think that we could help each other out by giving each other some positive social credibility. And I'm not talking about making up stuff about each other. I'm talking about if you think someone's awesome, you know, put something on their Facebook page because then they could take a screenshot of that and put it in, you know, if they could create maybe a, um, oh my god, here's my techno dummy brain. What do you call those things? On your website, you have the home, pa oh, a page, that's it. Home page, you've got your you know, about me page. You could put a testimonial page in there and you could literally, if you build enough and if we help each other out, we could either do videos about each other or we could just put something in our Facebook wall or a comment about something, we could literally take a screenshot of those Facebook things and put it in those pages and that will help us all tremendously. Yep, I'm actually doing that for one stuff I shop at the moment and because our products are all aloe vera, I'm actually building a, um, I, I'm not actually so much calling the testimonial page, I'm calling this one um, a, a review, review page, but I'm gathering, um, you know, feedback from customers who have used my aloe vera products. Um, I'm gathering feedback from um, people who have used the aloe vera, who have just used aloe vera, you know, the potted plant. Um, I'm going around the internet and I'm, I mean, because some of the testimonials and reviews on um, aloe vera products are not always mine, they can be wrong to other people, I'm having to get permission from these people because I like to make sure if I'm using somebody else's stuff, I like to have permission from that person. So, you know, like Marie has, um, you know, Marie's done some good blogs and she's done some good stuff, um, and she has her own, you know, her her own website there. Now, if there was part of Marie's blog, or I, you know, wanted to use um, something on Marie's website on my own website, a website that I had. You know, I would automatically go to Marie's contact page. I would explain to her, you know, what part of that website or that blog that I wanted to use, who I was, and where I wanted to use it, and in which way I wanted to use it. Um, I would get Marie's consent first, um, rather than just take the work and put it on my site, only to have Marie come across it and go, well, I didn't give this person consent to use my stuff. Um, you know, and I'm not really happy about this. Um, so, you know, but yeah, building building a review site and stuff like that, um, all I would say to anyone is if, you know, if there is a bit of stuff out there that people have put out about you that's good, that you want to use it on a page, as a testimonial page or a review page, um, make sure it's okay with that person to display their name or, you know, their details. Um, before you actually put it on your website or you, you know or, or anywhere else just you know make sure it make sure you, you have permission really um, I think I think yeah that's a great point I think that we should ask each other I mean say for example Sandra we could we could make this a deliberate thing a deliberate activity within our little community so if I wanted someone to say something nice about me um, I could, you know, and, and only if they really mean it, you know, if, if, if I wanted, say, you to do a little Facebook, you know, comment on my wall or something, mm -hmm. I could send you a little private message and say, hey, Sandra, show me some love or, you know, whatever. 
And if you wanted to, if you if you think that I did something valuable that week, or if you I don't know admired one of my blog posts or something, and the same with yourself. If if you know if I happen to try one of the products that you're promoting, and if I really liked it, I, I don't. I think it would be beneficial for everybody if we could deliberately have a system where if you wanted me to put something on your wall, you could ask me, and I'll do it. And then you could take a little screenshot of my comment and put it on your site. That's it. And that's, so, I mean, you know, I'm about to put something on, let's say for example, I'm going to put something on Robbie's wall. Um, I'll say, Robbie, you know, thank you for your leadership or whatever it is. He could, yeah, take a screenshot of that. Put it on his website. Put it on his website because that makes a massive impact. If, if, some, if you're promoting the SFM or whatever it is you're promoting, and someone hits your site and sees a page full of beautiful testimonials about you personally as a person, that's going to make a massive difference. And that they don't have to, you know, they don't have to be huge testimonials. Yeah, you know, they could just be, you know, you could have done something for, you, you could have helped somebody, a friend or something, and they could have come onto your Facebook page um, that night and, and thank you for, for helping them. And it might have just been something as simple as walking them through how to set up a Facebook fan page. Or um, inspiring and if them. If, if they've yeah, said or inspiring them. Um, and, yeah, and, you know, just... Uh, just make sure with them that it's okay um, that you take that and put, you know, just tell them that you're going to put it on your website. Go, you know, that was a lovely thing. You know, I, I love the way that you thanked me on my Facebook, you know, for, um, for inspiring you earlier on or, you know, helping you earlier on. Would you mind if I actually put that um, on my testimonial page on my website? Whack it up on your website. Um, for, for us doing it actively for each other, you know it's okay. You know it's okay to take that. You know, so like if I sat down and did a video tonight about my journey and happened to mention Marie in it, you know, Marie should know that that's, that's fine by me to take that video, that you know, a snippet of that video and put it on her website. Um, if I'm thanking her for you know things that she's helped me with, you know, that's fine. But you know, for other things like that, you know, just yeah, you know, anything nice or or you know. Um, that you can use as credibility that you're a real person and, and you do actively do things, back them on a, on a page on your website. Set up a page on your website um, because it, it does give you credibility and uh, it, it does let people know that you are real and you know you, you do take action. You're quite happy to help out. You know, and, and, yeah, so, so do that. And it's really no, good if, it, if it's done on Facebook because with a Facebook, you know how you know how some sites they have like testimonials on there, but they've written the testimonial. Yeah. You know what it like? They've actually typed in the testimonial. If it's a Facebook um, screenshot and people know it's real, if it's got like a profile picture on there, it's got a name on there, it's got a date on there, and it's really difficult to uh, fake a screenshot of a Facebook comment. If That's we right. all really um, make a conscious effort to maybe yeah, really do this do this for each other. If if I can um, if I if anyone wants me, for example, to write them a, a testimonial, I'm not gonna say anything I don't need. But yeah, I'm happy to do it. So ask. Let's all be conscious about the fact that we want to help each other out. If you want something, if you want to build yourself a testimonial page um, don't be shy to ask for it. But most that's of us. What I, yeah, that's what I like about Google Plus, um, and that's why I like building a lot on Google Plus, Marie, because um, the the fantastic thing about Google Plus is it's very very easy. You don't even need to take a screenshot of Google Plus. It's very easy to take a, a public post. So, you know, if I put up um, like there was a. There was a blog post that I wrote on the, and I shared it on my page on, on Google Plus and um, yeah, I had a couple of I had some really good feedback from some ladies on that on that post on Google Plus. Well now I can actually just take the embed code of that Google um, that, that post on my business page on Google Plus uh, with the comments and all and I can just embed that onto my page, onto my website. And it has the whole post along with everyone's comments and stuff. And when somebody comes along, you know, that page on my website, 
if they happen to like that post, they can actually like that post on Google Plus, but on my website. So they don't have to actually go to Google Plus to do it. And they can leave a comment as well, but they can actually read other people's comments. Um, and it's the same as if somebody, you know, publicly, you know, thanks you for something that you've done and says, you know, that was really great. You really helped me out. It was fantastic. Um, you know, I, I loved your work. You can then take that. Um, and just take the embed code and just embed it on your website. You can do the same thing with your face with your Facebook, but it's a little bit more technical, and it's a lot easier with Facebook to take the screenshot of it and put it on and just share the screenshot onto your website as an image, right? Is that what as an just image? Yes. Yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah. Um, the only way I know how to do it, anyway, is yeah to take the screenshot if it's Facebook. But that Google Plus thing sounds really good. But yeah, if it is on Facebook, take a screenshot and just and just pop it in the page just as an image. Yeah, and I mean, you know, if you only want to use it as a small image, or you know, you don't feel people can read it correctly, you know, you can always um, you can always write transcribe the actual you know the actual post. So underneath it, just write a, a little. Um, you know exactly what the post, you know what the, the post was, and what the comments say on there. But um, generally, if you just if you do a screenshot or, or a snippet, if you have a Windows computer, you can do a screen snippet. They're really good when you snippet things because you can snippet them really close in. It does look like an actual picture, and it is quite clear. Um, and, and yeah, you then you just install it on your website as an image. Well, I'm going to start now. I'm going to start putting things on people's walls. <laughs> um, I just, I can't stress enough how much that has helped me personally. Um, the, the credibility from just people saying, oh, Marie, thanks for everything. I to that thing that you said. Or, you know, thank you for, for sharing that. Or, you know, just anything. Or anything really does help. Anything positive really does help. I think uh, many of us could benefit from it. Oh, look, I, I think it is a great way that uh, you know, new, new business um, startup owners, you know, operators, whatever you want to call yourself, um, anyone new in the uh, the digital economy, um, you know, credibility can go a long way to helping mm. you. And I think on that note, um, it must be getting pretty late for the guys over in New Zealand. It'd be about midnight now, wouldn't it, Robbie? That's correct. So we we might um, start wrapping this up, eh? So people can get to bed and, and tend to their children and all of that sort of stuff. Yep. Thanks, guys. And next week um, we'll do a tour of the back office. So I'll go through and explain things all the stuff in the back office so you know what's there and how to find your way around it. That'll be great, Robbie. Um, that'll definitely help a lot of new members out and, um, and yeah, make it a lot more comfortable for them. And I've um, written down the list of things that we're going to cover over the next um, few calls. So we'll cover... I went through the list of um, what people wanted from Stuart. I think okay. we can cover them in our group like trainings on um, uh, simple lead capture um, and all those sorts of things, DBL. Okay, cool. So, yeah, no worries. Thanks for coming, everyone. And um, I'll have this posted probably over the weekend sometime. And I'll post the link in Facebook and it will be put on our YouTube channel, which is down in the marketing. Have a nice evening. Thank Thanks for coming.